At this point, I'm assuming that you have Respondus set up, and you also have a list of labs, and you also got the theory. But here's how you're going to bring in those RSA files, and RSA stands for Respondus Archive. So instead of under Projects, you're going to say Archive, and then you're going to browse to where it is. And uh, I've got it sitting in this particular directory, so I can just click on this and say Open. Now, this one already exists, and I don't want to overcopy it. Originally, it was called lab1 underscore questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this test and delete me. If you don't have any files in there, then you can just bring it in, and it should be brought in as exactly the same name as I sent to you. So we're just going to say that, and it's going to say archive has been put in there, restored. And we can go down here, and we can see down here it's test delete me, please. And we can open. So you can preview and publish. Um, and you can look at stuff, you can look at settings, and under settings, random blocks. Now this has no random blocks. If you did, you'd see letters in here, and it would say you're going to do one of these questions, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas for this particular one, it's going to ask you to do all of the questions that are here. So what you want to do is publish. You're going to go to publish here. You're going to say publish wizard. You're going to say batch process to multiple courses. You're going to say next. And then you're going to specify the actual places where you want it after you log in. So you're going to say, I have to say OK. You're going to have to log in to Seneca. Once you're logged in, you're going to close after login. And then you're going to click here and say OK. Then you're going to specify which courses and lab sections and so forth that you want to put this in. So you should see all your courses and stuff coming up here. Now EE is a lab, so I'm going to say this one and I've got DD, and I've got BB, and CC, and down here I've got AA. So I would select those for the labs. Now if it's theory, it'll be either AC or DC, but you just select those, and all you have to do is say next. It's going to say, well, where do you want them? Now for lab quizzes, which this is, you would open this up, and you can see that I've already got these directories set up for you, so you would just click on here for lab quizzes, hit next, and the rest is just automatic. It's just going to go in there. So the next part that we're going to look at is once you've got all of these lab quizzes put into the proper places, lab tests and whatever, and so forth, what do you have to do next on Blackboard to set this up properly? And we'll take a look at that now. Okay, when you download Lab 1 Questions, it looks like there it is, and it's available, but it's not. This is a folder, and right now we've got Edit Mode turned off. So if we click on this, we can see all the other folders that actually showed up when we were in Respondus and selected which one of these quizzes did we want to put it in, which folder, because that's what these things are. So if we turn off Edit Mode, this is exactly what the students see, and if they click here, there's nothing there. There's no content to display because Edit Mode is turned off, but if you turn it back on, there is the actual lab questions that you downloaded. Okay, which means that we can go in here now and we can set stuff up. We can say edit the test options. So whether the students see that there's a folder there, who cares because there's nothing in the folder as far as they're concerned. So let's take a look at what you have to set up in terms of setting these checkboxes and so on. Open test in new window. Make available to students. You don't have to worry about adding a new announcement, but here's some of the more important things here. Force completion. Set timer. Now this particular quiz, quiz 1 and 8 are both two periods, so that's why it's 110 minutes here. If you've got a one period quiz, which is uh, lab quiz 2 through 7, then it's 55 minutes. But either way, you have to turn auto submit on. And this is what happens because sometimes these students will forget to submit and they leave and then it's sort of in limbo and you can't do much. So auto submit means that if they forget and they just disappear or they have a problem, at the end of the class, whenever the time runs out, that's when it's going to actually submit. Now you've told it 110 minutes and that's exactly the time it's going to use from the time that they start. But here's the other thing. If you take a look here, we have display after which means this is when that test is going to show up. It's going to show up at this particular date at this particular time. Now you should only give them a 15 minute window to start. So it's the same date and the same time plus 15 minutes to give them a 15 minute window to get started. 
no matter where they start in this window, they still have 110 minutes. So if they start at 239, because at 240 it shuts off, but if they start at 239, from that point on, they have 110 minutes. So this is their window of opportunity to actually get in and start the test. Now, the other thing that you want to do down here is add user or group. Now, at some point, you're going to get from the accommodations department a list of students that have accommodations that will allow you to specify all the students that have maybe 1.5 times the time. And I've made a group of those students, and I just picked them out of a list, and you'll see how to do that later. And I just click on this, and I say Submit. And this gives them the extra time that they're supposed to have. Now, all these are going to be single attempts, but what you're going to do in here Everybody has 110 minutes, so if you multiply 110 by 1.5, you're going to get 165 minutes, so that's why these guys are going to get their extra time. Now down here, this is extremely important. Do not check anything in here. Give them absolutely no feedback at all. One at a time, prohibit backtracking and randomize questions and submit. Once that's done, everything's ready to go. So at this particular date and time, the test will show up. So let's take a look at lab quizzes. So right now, if we do this, turn edit mode off, this is what they'll see, even though, as we said before, you've got all these other ones that you'll probably set up before too long, and they'll be in there, and all these might be turned on like they are here. But when they go and take a look at clicking on here, nothing's going to appear to them until that date and time in that 15 minute window, then it disappears from here. And that's what they're going to see, even though you can always just turn on edit mode and be able to do stuff. Now there's going to be times when students really messed up and for whatever reason they got kicked out or whatever. And we're going to look at more of those details later. But for right now, they have this available to them. They click here. And if this is shut off, you can't just say make available. Uh, you have to go in here and edit test options. And what you have to do down here is actually specify a time that maybe is five minutes past the current time, which will give them time to get in. And then you say submit that. And when you're finished, you can go back here once you see them come into the test. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Then you can go back to lab quiz. And then right away, because it's past the time, you can just say make this unavailable so they can't even see that. And that's the best way to deal with it, where you're not having to set up two different times. The beauty of setting these things up is that while you're sitting there, after the two periods are done, all these marks will flood right into your mark gradebook without you having to do anything. So this is lab one, lab two, lab three quiz, lab four quiz, lab five quiz, lab six, seven and eight, and the lab tests all just go into the mark book, which is great. Saves you a lot of work. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how during a lab test, lab quiz, or any kind of evaluation, how to look at the students' marks and know whether or not they actually got kicked out or not and have a valid complaint. At any point during the test, you can take a look at how they're doing. So let's take a look at this guy with 61.5. And so you can click here and you can say view grade details. Now you can do this while they have a circular blue dot there, which means they're still doing it. You can do it at any time. It's not going to cause any problems whatsoever. So we can then say view grade details. And then we can say view attempt. And under view attempt, we can see how well they're doing. And this can be done at any time at all. While they're doing the test, after they've done the test, it does has no effect on anything. So you can see that this is the given answer. This is the correct answer. So they got it wrong. So they obviously had some issues. And one of the things you never do is you never give them back exactly where they went wrong on anything. For instance, <clears throat> If they had this kind of question and they're asking you and said, well, where did I go wrong? Well, you can say well, on and or an exclusive or you had some issues. You don't have to say anything more than that. You don't have to give them the specific questions and the specific answers. You just say that's where you had the issue. And then they can get that information and they know that they have to work on and or an exclusive or. But you never give them the exact question and answer because if you do, you might as well just throw the test to the wind because everybody's just going to take that and they'll make up a big thing and put it on coursehero.com and everybody will know all the right answers from now on. So these are the kinds of things you can do. You can just scroll through this, take a look, and then you can say exit. Times when students will tell you, oh, it kicked me out. And this might be true and it may not be true. They may just have gone through the test, got a bad result, and they want to go back and do it again. So this is how you tell. Even if during the test, you can go through and take a look and you say, well, they've done down to here, but they haven't done this question because 
none are given. Anytime it says none are given, none of this has been completed. And if they got kicked out, then they got kicked out here on question seven. Then you'd have to reset it, reset the attempt. But again, please ask them if they want the attempt reset or not uh, before then. And then if they do, you just reset the attempt. It clears everything. And then again, you have to go and let them back in to do the test if it's past that 14 minute window. But if it doesn't say none given, they've answered all the questions. And that's a trick they'll try and do. They'll say, oh, well, it kicked me out, blah, 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 blah. Well, you can take a look. And if there's none of these none given things here and they got answers for everything, that's a lie. Now, another thing you should be aware of when you take a look at the mark book, and let's go up for this one particularly. Let's click here. And you can go down all the way down to edit column information. And if you do look at that, the primary thing will be score. And that's not great for Markbook. So you can very easily change this to percentage and they then say submit. Then all the numbers that you're going to have for your spreadsheet will be as percentages, which are a lot easier to form uh, calculations and do things to actually generate the marks for the semester if everything is done as percentage.